About 30 years ago, Lexus introduced the LS400. That was a fabulous car, brimming with technology, all sorts of goodies, electronic and otherwise. Then they introduced the ES, and that was a success also. This is the brand spanking new Lexus ES300H. This Lexus ES300H is brimming with technology also. And in fact, it's the latest stuff that was crammed into the LS and LC top of the line Lexuses. All new ESs have LED headlights. The top model gets matrix headlights, so those ones that turn little cells on and off so that no one in front is dazzled. This hourglass grille, it's a little bit on the polarizing side. Some people love it. Some people hate it. I actually don't mind it. It's got a complex series of lines going up and down to denote the strength and the power that Lexus says this car has. I think they probably overstated that just a little bit. This is the fourth generation Toyota and Lexus hybrid system and it's got a 2.5 litre Atkinson cycle four cylinder petrol engine and an improved battery and electric motor combination. And that's good for 160 kilowatts. There's no point talking about torque because quite frankly it doesn't equate very well to a hybrid system. ES comes in two variants, the luxury and the sport luxury. There's 17 inch alloys on the luxury and 18 inch alloys on the sport luxury. The ES300H borrows heavily in profile from the LS500 sedan, that top of the line flagship. This graceful swoop is meant to look like a coupe, although frankly this is way too big to be a coupe. Also borrowed from the LS500 is the little divot in the top of the door handle that you use to lock the door. You unlock it by putting a hand inside. All of the ES300s in Australia have this little spoiler on the boot. Around the back there's some more of those L's. Now you'll see L's everywhere on a Lexus, although you'll see L's everywhere on every car because every car has angles. But there's a long graceful swooping back window. It gives you plenty of room in the boot, so the boot is kind of this long, but also it gives you tons of room in the cabin. And unless you've got a very, very tall head, you won't scrape the top. But I just noticed now with the driver's seat sitting right up high, my uh, coif was touching the, um, the bottom of the sunroof. It's got a feast of extras, a veritable cornucopia of technical goodies. We've got active steering, in other words, this thing will keep you centered in the lane. It will also help you avoid accidents. Not only that, the active cruise control will keep you a separate distance from the car in front. And there's a really cool dash. The door is, by the way, a little bit low, but it's nice and long, so it's really easy to get in and out. I've got this seat set for my driving position. Look at how much room there is. Look at this. Look, look at that. There's a little mat thingy back here. And there's also some uh, vents for air conditioning, as well as a center console and a rear ski hatch. That will allow you to put long stuff in the boot. In the front, however, the story is even better. Every conceivable luxury has been lavished on this car. And remember, this is the entry level model. There's one above this with even more stuff shoehorned in. So look how comfortable this is. The steering wheel is electrically adjustable. Up here are the buttons to alter the driving mode and to turn off the traction control. It's about 8.9 seconds to 100, so you aren't gonna be winning land speed records anytime soon. But, look at how beautifully everything falls to hand. This is just absolutely gorgeous. This is the latest version of Lexus's steering wheel controls. Incredibly easy to use. There are also paddles. You see those? Paddles to change the gear ratio in your CVT transmission, although I suppose it's just CVT really because you can't have a constantly variable transmission transmission. Behind this we've got the stalks. Now these stalks have the controls for lights and the automatic light. So this has got automatic high beam, automatic dusk sensing lights, automatic wipers, everything is automatic. You just about don't have to, in fact you could just stay at home and send this car out to do your shopping. 
Let's start with the centre console. We've first of all got this really clever centre armrest lid. Look at this, opens both ways. That's bound to go wrong, that is bound to break. There's a little rest pad here for, so that you can use the trackpad. And this, come over here and have a look down here. Look at this, look, look, look. There's a little button to, to turn your bottle holder into a cup holder. There's also another cup holder over here and a couple of USBs in front of the gear lever. Now I don't know if you can pick it up on the camera but there's some lovely surfacing on this plastic around the air conditioning controls. Here you'll also find controls for the radio and the media and that's how you switch between the two. You've got a lever for individual front climate control and up here you can see currently the engine is charging the battery. You can have this display show anything you like and this 12.3 display is one of the biggest in the industry. Also we have this heads up display, can you just see that? And it is projected out of that little thing in the dash up onto the windscreen and that information changes as you drive along. This car really is very, very clever. Also, we've got a sunroof. Now that we're driving, the hybrid system really comes into its own. It is absolutely sensational. And the other thing is this cabin is ghostly quiet. And when I say ghostly quiet, the only thing you can hear is the ruffle of your espadrilles on the carpet. No, <laughs> seriously. No. And the fan. That's why I've had to turn the fan down or you wouldn't be able to hear a thing. Lexus will move enough air in three seconds to freeze the Antarctica 15 times over. A lot of people don't believe that, but it's true. 15 times. No, it's serious. As you go along, the hybrid system will switch between charging the battery, being driven by the electric motor provided by power from the battery, and power from the engine. The engine also serves as a generator and that will charge the batteries as you're going along. ES300H is just so beautifully smooth. They've got specially developed dampers and that keeps the cabin noise down and the handling up. This isn't a sports car. If you want a sports car, you're going to need to buy something else. Because inside is so quiet and so smooth and there's so much room in the back, I mean, that's an incredible amount of room and it absolutely blitzes the opposition. BMW 5 Series, Mercedes E-Class, Jaguar XF, to name but a few, Audi A6, would struggle to match that legroom in the back. There are also lovely touches, and they're typically Lexus too. There's an analog clock on this screen, which I think looks particularly lovely. You can configure this screen in any number of different ways. The driver's instrument panel is also made up of an LCD screen and some analog uh, dials over on the side. All importantly, there is the digital speedo, which as you know, I set a great deal of store by. One of the things I don't like about the Lexus line generally is the interface between the human and the infotainment system. It's this trackpad down here which is ridiculously difficult to use and you certainly cannot use it on the go. Interestingly, this very model in America has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto does not have it here. I was talking to the Harman Kardon people and those boys told me that they can certainly put Apple CarPlay in anything they like, it's just a matter of specifying it. While we're sitting here at the lights waiting for something to do, look at the surfacing, that's all lovely and soft, beautiful and soft and this is all beautifully surfaced and there's stitching over here, look. Look at that stitching, are you looking at the stitching? They've really thought about the inside of this cabin. It feels luxurious without being over the top. It feels like it's been thought about. It feels like it's been designed and I like that. Not only that, it's got Lexus's rock solid 
reliability. The steering is unbelievably light. As I said, there's different modes. In sports mode, the steering does get a lot of extra weight. But in normal mode, it is very light and uh, it, it makes the car feel like it weighs absolutely nothing, even though it weighs 1,700 kilos or thereabouts. Pricing for the range is just a few shekels under $60,000 plus on roads for this base model and it goes up from there. I'll put a full list of prices and features in the written article with a link in the comments below. I'm going to rate Lexus's E300H at 8 out of 10. It would have gotten a little bit more but the exterior styling is probably a little bit too conservative for my liking. I don't dislike it but they could have gone so much further. And it all comes from a time when Toyota's group manager, group CEO and president, Mr. Akira Toyota, said he didn't want to make boring cars anymore. And one thing this car is not is boring, but it is conservative. Let me know what you think in the comments below and don't forget, touch the little round, little round symbol I'm over here. Which camera am I on? This one little round one. Touch that to subscribe.